welcome to Wednesdays with Mr. Tie-Dye. I'm sure some of you guys are probably still watching the, the commercials right now, so I'm just going to kind of chat a little bit here, see who's in the room. Um, I guess we're still waiting on more people to show up. Looks like just a few people here. We got Uniquely Yours, so hello Uniquely Yours, nice to see you. Um, like I say, today we're going to do a cross video. I do have a, a cross video up. Uh, that one is one where I kind of pleat around the edges. This one here, I'm going to tie it up a little bit differently. So, let's see. I guess we'll just go ahead and get started. I'm not sure how many people will show up for today's, but still kind of figuring this out here how to do these live videos again. I'd gotten kind of into a groove last time and had a bunch of followers. So we're gonna just kind of play with it and see what happens as we go forward here. So, <clears throat> to start with, I have a t-shirt that's been washed and soaked in soda ash and spun out so that it's just barely damp. Um, I have also centered the t-shirt, meaning I tucked one sleeve into the other so that I had the middle of the front of the tee and the middle of the back of the tee right here. I do have a video up on my channel and there is a link in the description box down below. Okay, it looks like we got people showing up here. Somebody's asking for louder volume. Um, oh, it looks like my mom made it. Hello, mom. Uh, Chris... Christophe, uh, Jessica, Theo, Goya's Gardens and tie-dye, vibrant tie-dye. Looks like we got a bunch of people showing up here ready to hang out on the live stream. Your volume is a little low, so if you can't do anything about that, you might speak up. Yeah, I'll have to just talk louder. Um, yeah, I'll try to talk louder here. I'm still working out the bugs of I need to get a, a new phone to use. For my live streams, uh, this one here, uh, I plug it in, but I can't plug in an external mic at the same time because, anyways, uh, but I will get that sorted out. Uh, let's see. All right, well, we're just going to jump right into this one. Okay, so like I say, this t-shirt's been soaked, uh, been pre-washed, soaked in soda ash, it's spun out so it's just barely damp. That's kind of my preferred method for folding the t-shirts um, and I've already drawn my cross on here the way I do my cross is uh, this is 12 inches long four inches here four inches here so these two are the same length this here is twice as long as that and that's going to just be helpful in the folding of this to have this here be twice as long as these and you'll see that as we go so you can do this on the, the whole t-shirt, front and back, if you wanted to. But in that instance, if I folded that up and tied it with sinew, I would want to let it dry just because of the number of layers of fabric that would be folded inside. So I'm going to do this on just the, the front of the t-shirt. And I will tie, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll do a heart or something on the back of the t-shirt. Um, but like I say, you can do it on the front and the back, but if you do it on both, then you might want to let it dry or maybe do an ice dye or something just to make sure it gets good saturation. So I'm going to flip that back out of the way. And now I have, this here is the top part of my cross, obviously, because the, the collar is up there. And I'm not sure how well you can see this line. I drew it on the, the edge there so you can kind of see it. Um, but the way we're going to start folding this now is I'm going to just fold this down right here along this cross piece and I drew the lines on both sides so you can see that and I'm just lining this up right along here and now I'm going to take this top piece and fold it up and it lines up right exactly because this here is four inches long and the cross piece was four inches long so those are both the same so that's one good reason for having the the third and two-thirds thing so now I'm going to fold this other one up. I'm just going to fold it <clears throat> and lay it right along that same line and it sticks up twice as far. So now I'm going to fold that back down and lay this right next to the other line. 
and it comes right down to the point here. So that part there is the cross. And kind of what I want to do is tie down into a little bit just to give it a little bit of thickness. So I'm going to tie about that much of the cross when I tie this up here. So what I'm going to do now is just pick up all of these folds. You can see I've got my line on all four of those creases there. So now I'm going to pick that whole thing up. And then I'm just going to pleat that right in my hands here. So I'm just sticking my thumb in the middle there, pleating this over, back, and once more. So it's basically just into fourths. However big of pleats you want to do is just fine. And now I'm going to take this part here and just kind of fold it down. This here is the t-shirt where it goes up to the sleeve, and this here is where it goes down below the cross. So those, I'm just going to fold those down under, just down beside. And like I say, this here is the line that I drew on there just to kind of show you how thick I was going to tie this. So now the other side has done the same thing. This top part here, I'm just folding that down. So now what I have sticking up is just all of the parts of the cross that I tied in there, that I just kind of folded and laid them right on top of each other. I think the, the idea for folding it this way came to me when I was kind of working on the, the huggable peace sign, that folding up and down and laying your lines together. Uh, just all of a sudden, the cross came to me and I needed to fold a new way for it. Uh, I did mention that I was going to do a couple variations, but the other one was just a, a harder version of this. It's doing the raised pleat where you lay it out flat, like I do the letters, and I pull it up and then fold them together. Uh, when I was doing both ways, that way was just way more difficult. I figured there's no sense in showing you that. This is much easier to do. So now I'm just going to take my sinew, and you can do however thick you want on here, but however thick you do is how wide the cross is going to be. So I think I'm going to go a little bit above that line. I wrap around a few times, pull it tight, I wrap around a few more times and pull it tight. And I'm, when I'm pulling my sinew, I'm making sure to kind of pull it away from myself, not pulling up towards myself, because if you ever break the sinew with this pointed towards your face, you either punch yourself or you hit yourself with that, and that's no fun. So always pull kind of away, so if it breaks, your arm just goes back out of the way. Anyway, so now I have my cross tied in there nice and tight. So I'm going to cut my sinew and leave a little bit of a tail. And I like to just tie a knot in mine. So I stick my finger in there and just wrap that around a few times. Poke the short end back through. And that just creates a big knot. And that just for me, when I'm doing my rinse out later, it just makes it easy to grab this here. If you've done like a geode and you have a whole bunch of sinew tied up in pieces all around your shirt, it makes it easier if you can just find all of these knots to grab onto because also the sinew can be slippery. Okay, so now we have the cross tied on the front. Let's do something different on the back here. Well, let's do a, instead of a heart, let's do, let's just do a, spine of the back and I think I'm going to do kind of a wavy spine you guys can just kind of freehand this if you want or you can draw yourself a wavy line just because you can do however you want for the spine if you want a straight spine I would draw a straight line if you want more of a v-shaped spine you can start out narrow down here and go up wide you can do a diamond shaped spine you can do all kinds of things I like to kind of play it around mix it up this time I'm doing a wavy spine so I'm just gonna kind of follow that I'm not doing it exactly the wavy spine was just kind of a, a general guideline for me and now I'm just tying it up I'm doing just a quick pleat but the, the more careful you are with your pleats the more precise your design is going to come out but mostly what I'm trying to do is show you techniques and then you can work on those techniques to perfect it I sometimes will come back and flatten these pleats out at other times I will just leave them I'm kind of a let's just kind of see what happens kind of tie-dye sometimes so 
you don't always have to be precise with your folds. You can be kind of more lackadaisical, but just know that you're going to have more variations show up when you're not being precise with your folds. I personally like some of those variations, so I will encourage those. Once I get this initial pleat done, I kind of wrap it around just to hold that in place, and then I can set that down and straighten out some of these pleats now. It's just my way of just kind of moving through things quickly, but also, like I say, I'm not worried about being exactly precise. So that's all up to you guys. You guys can make your choices about how precise you want to be. If you want to do start doing some of these ones like uh, Justin and uh, Stephen Jay and all of those guys, uh, you guys will want to be way more precise and probably folding up dry rather than damp. But this here is just fun. I enjoy this art, so I just kind of play with it however. Okay, so once I got that kind of straightened out just a little bit, then I will wrap that up more. Okay, now from here, I have the front of the T tied with the cross. I have the back of the T tied with a wavy spine. And now I have my two sleeves tucked in here and all the rest of the T. And all of that, I think I'm just gonna scrunch it up. And for me, the easiest way to do that is to first start with these sleeves that are tucked inside each other. So I kind of separate out the front design and the back design, find the sleeves and tuck them down inside each other themselves just so that they lay flat. And this way, so you can see through the, the to the other side of the t-shirt here. So that just makes it, making sure you don't have too many layers folded up and they're gonna, it's gonna leave a big white spot. So that's one of the main reasons I like to fold the, the sleeves into themselves and then just tuck them up. And it's especially nice when you're doing long sleeves because if you have a big long sleeve folded over top of this, then you got a big umbrella over top so the long sleeves take a little bit longer, but you can stick your arm all the way down in there and just slowly kind of scrunch and pat them all down into the same space there. Okay, so we're getting ready to finish tying this up. Like I say, around the cross, I try to just kind of open up these creases as much as I can to flatten out as much of that as I can on here, especially since we're gonna do a liquid dye on this. A lot of times when I tie sinew, I will go ahead and do an ice dye or I let it dry and do an ice dye or something. But since we're doing a live video, we're just gonna go for it. I might not get completely the saturation I want, but a little bit of white around the cross isn't a bad thing. So we're just gonna go for it here. And I do have a, a video on how I use the sinew and the kite string. One of the main things for doing the kite string is I always wrap kind of towards myself here. So when I go underneath the t-shirt, I can lay this string down here. I put my thumb to hold it flat to the table. And then my other thumb holds it flat here. And then that just slides it right underneath without picking the shirt up. And that's just how I have found this kite string works best for me. And I like to give it just a little bit of a tug. You can hear it kind of squeak a little bit. To me, that's just the string locking into place just a little bit. It's not the same as sinew, but I kind of still use it in a similar type fashion with that little bit of tightening on it. Okay, now we're just gonna finish this out. Yeah, these pleats aren't the best ones, but this here isn't about doing a perfect pleat. This is about doing the cross in a different way. Let's tie this off, and then we're going to get some gloves on and get this dyed up. And then I think I'll get in and answer some questions. So, okay, Julie said that there's some questions for me so I will get to those soon I just think 
getting to the video straight away and demoing everything before I get into answering questions just makes for a better viewing experience for everybody that comes back later to watch this. So thank you guys for hanging in there while I kind of figure out new ways of doing these live videos. All right. So now the first thing is picking out some colors. I just had mixed up some bronze. So I think I'm going to put bronze on there. I think I'm going to do some blue around. Probably do, uh, let's see. No, let's do green. We'll do two greens. So yeah, I'll do a, a bright green and a dark green. So I have a uh, bright green that I mix myself emerald green here, uh, bronze, and let's see, what do we want to do for the back? I think I will mix uh, bronze in uh, to the pleats on the back, and we'll just do those three colors right there. So let's just go for it with what we have. Okay, so to start with, I'm just going to saturate this cross right here. Well, and since I tied it with sinew, I'm just kind of going right up to the line. I want it to start soaking in to all of these layers here. And I'm going to do the same thing with the bright green on the other side of the sinew line. Just to give them the most time to soak in. And also kind of let them come together just a little bit. Okay, so those are, since those are my biggest thickest pleats there. I like to get those first so that that dye can start soaking in. One of the things you can do with the, the cross is to squeeze it. Although sometimes it's good to have a dry, clean dry rag candy and you can even use the rag to squeeze the cross so that the dye doesn't splatter around elsewhere. So what I do then is just hold the rag, clean dry one, and just kind of wrap it right around that cross and then you can give that a squeeze and that helps squeeze the dye deeper inside there but then it also it squeezes out some of the excess dye so at that point then I would add a little bit more dye just so it can continue to soak in but that squeeze will give it a, a helping hand there so now the rest of this I'm going to dye with this bright green and then I'm going to coat it with the emerald green. All right, maybe, maybe I'll be able to answer questions. Let me take a peek and see what we have here in the queue. Um, let's see. What's your, what brand of tie-dye is your favorite? Oh, let's see, there was, how do I get to your training video? Okay, the training video is the beginner's tie-dye playlist. And I will just go ahead and put a copy of that right in. Let's see if I can find my way back here. Oh, there we go. Okay, I don't know what I did here. Okay, so here's the beginner playlist. I'll put that right in the chat box. And then let me see the other thing, favorite brand of dye. I like the Procyon dyes. Um, they, they do sell those in different places around the world and around the U.S. 
Uh, most people buy from the place that's closest to them. Some people will buy from the places that have the best selection. I happen to live on the West Coast, and Dharma is down in California, so they are the closest to me. They also have a really good selection. Uh, I've also bought dyes from Grateful Dyes in Colorado, and I have gotten some from Custom Colors in North Carolina. So basically, though, the Procyon dyes, as far as I understand, are pretty much the same. I mean, they, they mix the colors in different fashions. So, like the, the, the basic colors, primary colors of turquoise, fuchsia, and lemon yellow should be the same across all the areas. But maybe a bright green from each of the companies is going to be slightly different from each other, depending on <clears throat> the recipe they use to mix their bright green. Like I mix mine, I use three parts lemon yellow and one part turquoise. And that gives me a nice bright green. If I want to make it even brighter, I add more yellow to it. And if I want to make it darker, I add more blue to it. Or turquoise. Okay, so I'm going to add just another little squeeze of bronze in there. Just because. I can see it also kind of poking through the sinew just a little bit. So I think I have good saturation. We'll get the green in there good to make sure that we don't get too much leaking through and now what I'm going to do is add the bronze back here to my DNA uh, spine that I did the crooked spine and we're going to use bright green oh, I can use a smaller bottle for that Okay, so this is my emerald green. And bright green. All right. I think those were the only, yeah, those are the only questions so far there. If you guys do have any other questions, let me know and I will try to answer those either during the video or after I get done dying here. Sometimes I'm able to... Sometimes I can answer them and other times I need to think about them a little bit or I need to think about what I'm doing. So, we're getting this figured out here. But... I was going through my list and most of the videos that I have upcoming are ones that would be way more difficult to do as a live video. So I'm still kind of thinking up ideas for videos to do. I might end up kind of revisiting some of my designs and doing some of the videos again just to kind of cover. Sometimes over the years you think of new ways of doing things or you get new uh, I get new ideas for things that I can share within the videos, so I'll slowly figure this live thing out again, but if you guys have any suggestions on what you would like to see me do live, then please ask those. I don't see them so much in this comment box here on this live video, but below the video in the comment section down there that's something that i will go back to later and check so if you can leave your comments down there about what you suggest for upcoming videos then i will go and refer to that okay now just so i don't get confused here on my uh, spine on the back here i started with the bronze right up here at the line and then I went dark green and then bright green so I'm going to shift my colors one direction this way so oh, actually I guess I'm shifting them that way so I moved my bronze down to the end and now in the place where the bronze was I'm going to die with the the dark green the emerald green and then I'm just going to do the same thing I'm just going to move down the line with each new color that's the nice thing about the DNA is if you line your bottles up, it's fairly easy to just go down the line. 
but the main thing is getting your spaces right because if you miscount or something then you can get off in your your lines just a little bit and I've done that in the past and you can usually kind of recover and do something a little bit differently and it still works out I like to say there's really no failures in tie-dye you might not get what you want but you still got a cool tie-dye okay so now I'm going to put the emerald over top so what I usually do is I'll saturate with one color a lighter color whether I'm doing greens or blues or pinks or purples I put a light color down first and then I like to go over top of that with a darker color. <clears throat> the other thing you can also do is put down a darker color and then go over that with black. Or, you know, if I put down a dark green, I can go over it with a dark blue. So there's lots of options for exploring how to lay your colors down in different ways. But that's kind of how I like to do it. I put the lighter ones down, put the darkers over top. I try not to do colors that mix together over top of each other. So like I won't put yellow down and put purple over top unless I'm intentionally going for the browns to come from that. Uh, you can get some fantastic browns and I do love playing with, uh, with the contrasting colors. Okay, so now this here, it dyed the same way top and bottom, except for the DNA, which I shifted one space. I'm going to now batch this for 48 hours. So I'm just going to put it in my tub here and then I'm going to come back here and see what kind of questions we might have and chat with you guys a little bit more. I appreciate you guys hanging in there with me as I figure these new, this new thing out here. Okay, let's take those off and see what we got here for questions. Um, when I try to tie it the shirt scrunches up and balls up okay well that uh when you're tying something up if it's if it's not uh going just how you want it this one here i was kind of playing with another cross on here but it's it you do need to be precise i mean i know some of the the folding that i showed here i was being imprecise but if you're having troubles with it balling up and not um Sure, scrunch it up and balls up. Yeah, so if you're doing a, a folded thing, you need do need to make sure that your pleats are the same height. I, I don't need to fold a big thing. So if you have nice even pleats, then when you tie it, it stays the same. But if your pleats are off, you have some tall ones and little short ones and ones that then when you tie it, things can get messed up. If you're doing a scrunch design, and you go to tie it and it balls up, it might be because you've scrunched it too thin. You need to have your shirt be at least thick enough. So I try to do like maybe an inch tall pleats or scrunches so that when I tie it up, all of these scrunches, these pleats, they're all pushing against each other. If it's too thin, then when you scrunch it up, then the middle wants to ball, bunch up on you. So I hope maybe that's kind of what you're experiencing is just maybe getting taller pleats, maybe getting them scrunched tighter. When I do a pleat or scrunch, I will start in the middle and bring things into it rather than starting up the outer, outer edges and then have to scrunch this middle up. So I don't know. Hopefully that might answer your question there. Let's see what else we got. Uh, first time using chem water with thickener dye is beading on Kenny nubs. Is that normal? Only slightly thickened. Um, the if you're putting the dyes on dry, then that could be part of your problem there. Uh, I will even when I let something dry out completely before I dye it. I will then lightly spray it. I have soda ash in one of these spray bottles, and I will just lightly spray it to slightly dampen the fabric and then the dye tends to soak in more the other thing you can do is if it's not soaking in uh, to an area is i will take my nozzle here well i'm not going to put the nozzle on but if i had my nozzle 
with my die right here, you can take that and just rub it a little bit. And that will usually make it start to soak in. And once it starts soaking in, then it will soak in more. But yeah, that, that can be an issue. I haven't played to the extent with the, the Kenny Folds and the Honeycombs and stuff. Uh, the, they've been doing a lot of great stuff with the folding, but my belief is that they are scouring the shirts really good to get any kind of contaminants, additives out of them. So they boil them, dry them completely. They fold them dry and tie them up. And they do probably thicken their dyes just enough so that they don't spread too far. But I haven't gone to that extent to explore that myself. So I'm only going based off of theories of what I've experienced. So yeah, my guess is you might see if some of those guys might give you some hints. But the other thing is maybe try dampening the fabric just a little bit. Um, what is your best recipe for making your own brown? I don't have a, a best recipe, but the colors that I use for making my brown would be either orange and green, or I mix orange and purple, orange and yellow. Those three combinations is where I find I get browns from. And the trick to it is starting, I'm trying to find my bottles here. I know I got some small bottles. Is if you start with a smaller bottle like this here where you can mix just a little bit of dye. And the, the trick with it is to start with mostly, I'm just gonna do just one quick mix here. Is start with mostly uh, your lighter color, your orange or your yellow and then add the other color in slowly. And you have to kind of get an idea, like when I'm mixing this small amount, I'm using drops, but when I go to mix a bigger bottle, you have to use a larger amount for that. But by putting just a couple drops in, there was three drops. That might not have been enough, but we'll see here. And then I have white paper towel that I test my drops on. So that there made it kind of a, a little bit of a yellowy brown there. So I'm gonna go with a couple more. So it's just really a matter of exploring. There might be people out there that have recipes, but I tend to mix mine on the fly when I need them. So that darkened it up a little bit more. So that was six drops. That's nine drops now. So in this fashion here, you can slowly kind of zero in on the color that you're wanting just by doing little mixes like that. I hope that is kind of helpful for you. That's that's how I do it. I don't I don't have an exact the the bronze that I'm using is a Dharma color. I have a couple browns that I buy, but when sometimes I do need to make just a little bit of brown, and those are my go-to colors. Uh, mostly, I like to do the either purple and orange or purple and yellow. Those I have gotten some really nice browns out of, and just because I like to explore, I played with the orange and green. So, let's see. Oh, uniquely yours. Uh, thank you for that $20 donation. The donations certainly help me uh, be able to keep on making these videos rather than needing to stop and do orders or something like that to make my income. So I appreciate that. It helps keep this channel going. Uh, let's see. I'd like to see a video show how you're mixing your dyes. Okay, I do have one of those videos, but I do plan to make a new video on dye mixing. So, yep, that is that definitely on my list. It won't be a live video because I need to do it at the sink and I have other things that, anyways. So, yes, yeah, stay tuned for a dye mixing. Um, how do you prevent speckles when ice dyeing? Uh, part of the thing from this, the speckles comes from the dye not being dissolved. Now, in ice dyeing, you're specifically putting on powdered dyes. 
I haven't figured out how to avoid it, but one thing that I've thought of that I haven't tried yet is to use a piece of paper towel. So if you have your shirt folded up, take a white piece of paper towel, lay it over top, spray this hair, and a piece of paper towel will kind of mold right down to your t-shirt. And then put your dyes on the paper towel. And that might then keep any of the specks on the paper towel rather than on your t-shirt. The other thing would be to turn your t-shirt inside out, or if you're doing a tapestry, put the bot the back side of the tapestry up where you put your ice your your ice and your dyes on. But yes, the speckles that that is a problem. I know some of the different colors, uh, the, the reds, uh, the browns, purples, black. They have dyes that don't dissolve completely. In there so I don't I, I haven't done enough ice dyeing to know just what all of their secret tips and tricks are uh, curious why do you choose 48 hours to cure um, when I first started doing tie-dye I had heard that it was 24 hours and then as I was on a search to try to find ways to make my colors brighter darker more vibrant or whatever uh, I started exploring and I found that the longer times, I think it was especially when I was looking to make a better black. And black takes longer for it to set up or hit. Uh, there's, a, there's another term for it. I don't know if it's hit or not. Anyways, there, there is another term for when the dye okay, actually no, 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 sets. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Not you, Carl. Oh, sorry. Julie's talking on the phone here. I thought she was talking to me. Um, back to my question, what was I, oh, okay, uh, 48 hours. So the black dyes take longer to, to set up. So when I was questing to get a black or black, I explored with batching for a longer period of time. And I found that batching for 48 hours was one of the things that helped make my blacks just a little bit darker. The other thing I do for blacks is I use three different blacks within my black, but that's another topic. The 48 hour cure is just become a habit for me now. I like the, the way that the dyes look after 48 hours, but if I'm in a rush, I will do 24 hours. The other thing that helps speed up your setting time is adding heat. I like to have mine at, at least a minimum of 70 degrees, but if I can add more heat to it, so when I use these tubs, I can pull this tub down in here. Ugh. So these are the type of tubs that I use to batch my tie dyes in. I lay them in here. I put them on a rack so that any of the excess dyes will drip out rather than puddle up underneath there. But the other thing is I can put the, a lid on this and then I can pick this up easily and move it around where I want it. So in the summertime, I'll set these out on my carport shed in the sun, and they heat up and steam builds up in here, and that's nice. In the wintertime, I will stack these over a heater vent, uh, and that will help build up excess heat in those containers, which then helps set the dyes up faster. And after 48 hours, that was one more thing, the dyes are on their way out basically the dyes have died so it i find sometimes the 48 hours with heat added will help in the washout process because the dyes are basically done and they're not trying to grab on anymore so i hope that answers your question i know sometimes i ramble on and on let's see I would love to see some videos showing how you make non-symmetrical designs. I made an elephant head after three tries. It turned out amazing. Okay, as far as the non-symmetrical designs, there there are uh, ways of folding those up in the the same fashion that I I've done some of the letters. It's kind of a raised pleat. A little bit difficult, but most of the ones that I have done has been through stitching the design stitching the design so I take a dry a clean dry tee draw the image on there and then I stitch it and I do have one up for the dark side of the moon design um, that's a stitched design 
but I, eventually I will try to see if I can do some other non-symmetrical type designs by doing the, the pleating. It's kind of just a, a, a thing that you have to practice over and over again to get your pleats. Um, that was the other thing I was, when I was going to show you two methods for doing the cross, the other one, like I say, was a more difficult method. Well, that's what I call the raised pleat. And that's instead of folding along these outer lines here, I am folding along this inner line. Let me draw that center line a little bit. Granted, this one here is a symmetrical design, but what I'm doing is picking this up and then folding these bottom lines to match up down here as I'm folding. So you have to kind of do a raised pleat, but it's kind of done in your hand of lining things up. And it's hard for me to kind of explain that right here, right now. I will try to see if I can do a video where I can kind of demo that a little bit better. So let's see here. I'm going to take a scan down. That was I was looking at the questions Julie sent, but I think I'm gonna scan down. Yeah, it looks like we've had a good conversation. People asking questions. Okay, well I think we're at a good point here. It's 11.41, so we, I guess, haven't been here for an hour. I guess I'm doing better at these videos. Some of the live videos were three hours long. <laughs> Anyways, I appreciate you guys being here. I will do a reveal video on this cross uh, in a few days. I don't have any guaranteed time on that, but when it's washed, I will post a video for it. And when I think of a new video for next week or the week after that, then I will post that. Uh, I thought I had more, but a bunch of these videos I think I just need to get in and make because I need to be able to edit them. So anyways, I think that's about all I have to say for today. I thank you guys for joining me, and I will see you again hopefully next week. So peace, love, light, and laughter.